Hello, hello and welcome to the Harford TV High School Sports Showcase presentation. It's Edgewood versus C. Milton Wright Boys basketball game. Bob McCone, this is a game that could determine which of these two teams is the team to be beaten or the team to beat in Harford County and in the Uckback. They are that good, these two teams. It's going to be a very, very interesting game. Um, this is, um, you know, looking at the two coaches, John Stefanidis has been here for a while, uh, has created a great program at C. Milton Wright, a won a state championship a few years back. Um, you know, won a number of Harford County titles here. Uh, their, their kids play, they're, they're organized, uh, you know, well-drilled. They've got the Stimke, or the you know, Stimke uh, young man who mm -hmm. Uh, is absolutely outstanding. Uh, you know, he should be the star of the show out here tonight. Um, Terry Munchko, on the other hand, this is what his first year now yeah, back at Edgewood. Back. Uh, he was here back in 2005, 2007, mm -hmm. coached at Baltimore Community College for a number of years after that. And, uh, you know, he's trying to put a stamp on the program. And, uh, you know, he, he's telling us that, um, you know, the kids are working very hard. Uh, not as talented as, 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 you know, some of the clubs he's had in the past. Uh, likes the JV team a whole lot. Um, so this is a, a kind of a, a, a building year for him back into the program. And, but they have the talent to, to win some things. So it's going to be very interesting. It is going to be. Terry Munchko, you mentioned his name. Good to see him back at Edgewood. He was here back in the early 2000s, as you mentioned. They won a Susquehanna Division title. He had a winning record at Edgewood. Edgewood has a great deal of instability as far as coaching over the last number of years. And that certainly is never good for a program. So it's good that Terry Munchko is back, has made a commitment, wants to be at Edgewood for a number of years. It'll, good, it'll be good to see Edgewood build a program again. Well, it'll be good for us, Don, because obviously we're both graduates of Edgewood well, High School. Well, yeah, we didn't want to say that. But sure yeah, we did. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's not the, you know, we're here tonight as an impartial announcers, but you want to see your high school do well, and you want to come to see games and, and see them compete. And, and you know, be at the top level if they can. And, hey Bob, uh, they didn't tell us we were in the middle of the uh, of the student section who are all standing up. That means that we're going to be standing for the entire game. Should be very, very interesting. Seamilton Wright, a team that likes to slow the ball down a bit, likes to play a little bit of the, of the you know, modulated game. Edgewood is a go-go team. They like to take the ball and get up and down the floor. Remove your hat for the playing of the national anthem. Now to honor our country, here is the playing of our national anthem. And I can see the flag because it's... It's a big flag. <laughs> I like it. Robinson, it is so good to see. We talked about the student section. Last year, no basketball, no spring, no fall sports, no winter sports. It's so good to see the stands hold just about full here tonight. It is. And the, one, the one thing that I remember about C. Milton Wright way back when, when I when it first started, and I coached it at Aberdeen at the time, is they always had the student section mm. where the kids came out to support yeah. their yeah their team and here they are in mass again tonight yeah yeah, yeah. It's, and, gonna, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun can't wait to see this game you mentioned jordan stemke six foot four an athlete a really great athlete a great basketball player had uh, what do you have 48 points in the last game they played yes. 48 of their 70 points so it's a young man who can take over a game so you want to be watching 
see Milton Lights number 11, Jordan Stemke. Starting lineups, Aaron Clark, number 10, Jordan Stemke, 11, Jordan Ross, number 14, Justin Eckman, number 12, and 33 is Dylan Sander. That's the starting lineup for the C. Milton Wright Mustangs for Edgewood. They'll start the Corp Corpru tw uh, Twins. Uh, they are Jameer and Jamar, numbers one and two. Marcus Hicks is number three. DeAndre Maxwell is number four. And Trent Alexander, the big man, at number 15. Not a lot of size for Edgewood. Their biggest man is 6'3". So their seven-footer, who we're going to see later in the game, come off the bench. It'll be interesting to see how he does. That will be interesting. Um, we had that discussion, Bob, whether we had ever seen a seven-footer in the history of Hartford County, and we came up with what, Ricky Jackson at Aberdeen? Robbie Jackson, back. yeah. Uh, and he was very, very close. So Edgewood yeah. in the red uniforms, the red visiting uniforms, going from left to right, Seymour to right, in the white uniforms, going from right to left. Well, it's interesting to see if Edgewood's going to play man defense or if they're going to zone up on Stemke, because I, I, I don't know how well any of the individuals defend. And that was Stemke getting the uh, toss there. And Stemke okay. with the ball. Stemke can do a little bit of everything. His coach is telling us that, yes, he plays defense, he plays offense, he can dunk the ball. Well, John Billy is on him for Edgewood, so that's going to be the matchup. And you'll see John, he has the red hair. Um, yeah, you, you won't mention this him at all. Here's Stemke, up for the jumper. The first shot is good. Jordan Stemke, right on well, cue. Stemke with the first two of the game. That was a legitimate shot. It's... Um, that was a nice touch, and he pulled back to, to create some space for himself. Um, from the corner, no good rebound. Take it away by C. Milton Wright. And that's Dylan Sander with the rebound. Stemke controlling the ball, Billy on him. 11 on 11. No, I thought it was 5 on 5. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. A oh. little bit of a walk. Yes, the officials pick it up. Move that. Fishing Scott Burgess and uh, Glenwood Floyd, two veteran officials. We've seen officiate a lot. They do a great job. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Bob is withholding judgment on that. Uh, They're getting paid. I know that. Uh, and they've done good jobs in the past. Driving Edgewood up the block, Stemke with that block. Looking for three from the outside off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound, out of bounds. It'll go to C. Milton Wright. Minute and a half in the game, C. Milton Wright with the 2 nothing lead. Well, Edgewood's in a full court man press. They um, want to speed the game up. Oh, turned over by C. Milton Wright. And a foul is going to be called. Yeah. So number two. Mustangs Justin Ekman, number 12, who made the, the bad 12? pass. Yep, and then uh, made the, uh, the foul, and probably that was a good foul because he was one-on-one -on -one with the uh, score. 12, yes. Uh, Into the ball game right away. Uh, number 24, Rocco Polozowski. Rocco, who did not start the game, but does play a lot. Normally a starter. Out of bounds it goes, two seamers in right. Well, let me think, what was that, a minute and a half? Yeah, yeah, he was out for a minute and a half. Didn't uh, come to school one of the days this week, and so the rule is if you're not in school during the week, he can't start the game. Stemke, Billy on him. Stemke just controls the ball, Bob, so well. Well, it's, 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 in order, it's, uh, Stemke rises, shoots the uh, jumper off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound, Polozowski from the outside, partially blocked. Good job by Jameer Corpru with the block, taken away by C. Milton. Knocked out of bounds, 5.48 left in the first, still 2-0. It's, it's, you know, Edgewood had a kid breaking, and if he looked up, he'd have the kid for a basket, and he started to look over to the one side, and the kid from the other side grabbed the basketball, and. He lost it, so we'll see what out of bounds play here. See Milton comes up with Jordan Ross into Stemke. Stemke driving up off the rim, no good. Rebound, good. Well, that That's was a, that was a Sander. great opportunity for Edgewood player to take a charge on that play. Sander cleaned it up for instead of getting out of the way. Defense, 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 defense. 
Driving. Up. No good off the front of the rim. Rebound comes off. Good job there by number 14, Jordan Ross. Check it by number 24. That was Kolosowski. So, Kolosowski that's a, that was an interesting defensive set right there by John Billy. John got on his right hand and was daring him to go left. Stumpke to go left and Stumpke decided to give the ball up and reposition himself and maybe get to hopefully get the ball back at a different different point in a different spot. Aaron Redman in the ball game for Seamilton Light, the other normal starter who sat out the first this case not almost three minutes. Aaron Clark has the ball taken away. Driving one hander, no good. Rebound comes off. Kolosowski. Well, they have the trouble just putting layups in. Stemke up in the air, made a decision. Can't get it to fall. Foul is called. He'll go to line shooting, too. That's Aaron Redmond. Four forty-eight, four nothing. The only points of the ball game scored by C. Milton. Nice, nice form on that free throw shot. Bob, we talked about that in the JV game where we were admiring one of the JV players. Just cleanly through. And a nice soft touch. You mentioned infield that you coached at uh, John uh, Johns Hopkins. Almost yeah. taken away, and it is taken away. Polosowski. Great pass, great look, great basket. Took him long enough to find it. <laughs> Both of them, they almost could have called three seconds on the kid. Eight nothing to see Milton Wright Mustangs leading as Polozowski comes off and gets the basket. Uh, you're talking about Andy Enfield, uh, who now is the coach at the University of Southern California. Um, but he led the NCAA in free throw shooting uh, for, a, for, a, for a career at one point. And then the one year he shot like 97.2% from the free throw line. I mean, Bob, I can't do that year. With, with nobody looking. Okay, on my best day, if I can make nine out of ten, I'll say, wow. Well, we, we used to, the coaches used to stand in the middle watching the kids shoot when we had shooting drills. Yeah. And if, if Andy missed, it was like he'd turn around and say, all right, what what's, what's the problem? Yeah. You know, I mean, it was incredible. He was just an incredible shooter. Well, Jordan Stenke mm -hmm. has a chance to pass a thousand points. He will end up being probably the third leading scorer in the history of this school. And don't don't forget, he lost a year last year as right. a junior. He could well have been the leading scorer all time at Seamilton Wright. Michael Stefanides, the coach's son, has that on it. Stepke saves it in bounds between the legs to Edgewood. Rams looking for their first point of the night. Driving one hander up and there good. Goes. That's Jamar Jameer Corpru, Jamar the six-one senior twin of Jamar, number two. First two points of the night for Edgewood. Coming up to the four-minute mark left in the first period. Good. John Billy's doing a nice job on, on Stemke at this point. Shot over the back of the rim, no good. That was by Aaron Redman. The officials are going to say at Seam Milton Light basketball. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds, but there was a, you know, he got bumped. And the official chose not to call the bump and then just, you know, call the out of bounds, so. Stenke takes it away from Billy. Since he thinks about it, rises for the two-pointer. I tell you what, that's a nice shot right there. <laughs> you, when you go to the left and pull back, then create your own space and hit that jump shot, that's a very, very nice shot. And he gets off the ground. I mean, he gets up. Billy with the drive. Running one-hander, good. Oh, that's, that's a tough shot. Oh, it is. And that shot, he looks like he owns that shot. We see that so much anymore, Bob. You and I talk about that running one-hander that you never used to see back in the day. Yeah, that's because it hardly goes in. <laughs> <laughs> Stemke, Billy on him. They're clearing it. They look like they're clearing the side for him. Come up with a screen for him. Uh oh, he goes up, loses the ball. It's going to be Edgewood. Ball. He does. That was a very nice defensive help. Cam will come off by number four for Edgewood, uh, DeAndre Maxwell. Yeah. Slid over and, and uh, 
switched up on him to help John Billy, and he made a nice play. Looked like Stensky got off the ground, and they didn't know what he wanted to do with the ball. Well, he, he, when he did, he, he DeAndre hit the ball and knocked it out of his hands, and then Stensky hit the ball and knocked it out of bounds. So. Out of bounds, Edgewood. Jordan Tuttle in the ball game, number 22 for Seymour right? See, that pass is, is a 25, 30-foot pass. You can dribble 10 more feet and cut the pass down and give yourself a better opportunity to make the pass. Polosowski with a great rebound. Came back off the uh, the weak side and got that rebound. Redmond, Ooh. Stemke almost has it taken away. Polosowski driving, block, foul is called. Rocco Polosowski, nine and a half points a game. In fact, almost 10 points a game. So John Billy is out of the basketball game right now and it looks like DeAndre Maxwell is, is the man in charge of guarding Stemke at this point. Missing the free throw, Polozowski. 2.33 left here in this first period, the 10-4 lead for C. Milton Wright. They had uh, here nothing here comes Elson. Yeah, this is a young man we've been waiting to Elson see. Elson Baranu. Elson Baranu, the seven-footer, the senior. Terry Munchko says, yeah, he's a project because he's got a lot of ability, but a lot of things about his game need to improve. Yeah, he's not necessarily an inside player. He, he can run the floor, he can shoot jump shots, but there's the rebound. You can't teach that. Nope. The rebound on the basket by Baranu. Now back within four. Stimke gives it up. Gets the ball back. Up for the jumper. Off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound. Oh, it will not fall. It looked like the ball was in, but it didn't go. That was Brandon Stepp in the ball game for C. Milton Wright. Well, the one thing that Elson does is he um, he protects the rim and he makes you think about shooting the ball when you're in the lane that close to the basket. And Bob, he went up over his defender. The guy had inside position, got the rebound without fouling him, and then made the point. Well, when you're that tall and you can jump, <laughs> you don't have to foul him. That was a nice play. Diving, great defensive try. You know, it's going to be edge ball. ball. Should be. Yeah. Boy, that's a nice huddle, a nice hustle by Tuttle, number 22. It was. That's called getting some rug burns on your legs. Yeah, my favorite thing. <laughs> of course, you'd have to hustle to do that, so. Nice oh, pass, nice, pass. nice pass. beautiful pass. The horn blew, but I'm not sure why. Basket by Marcus Hicks. I don't know whether it would have been interesting if that was the um, shot clock. From the corner, no good. Polozowski. You've got to put both hands on the ball to grab that rebound instead of holding off with one and trying to grab with one. Minute 14 left here in this first period. 10-8 the lead by C. Milton. Most high school young men do not have hands that they can just reach out and just snatch it in one hand. Eric Berger into the ball game. Gets the ball. Redmond out front. Stemke. Now we have a new defender on him, Jamar Coulter. Yep, one of the twins. Yep. Almost taken away. Tuttle gets it back. Redmond driving. Reverse one-hander. Redmond. Nice. Very Great nice. basket. Redmond now with six points. Now that was a very nice play right there. It really was. Well defended. Yeah, and he used the rim for his protection. Almost taken away. And now diving, and it will be... Taken away by C. Milton Mike Redmond driving, puts it up and good. Boy, Eric Redmond has been great off the bench. He's now got eight points, eight of his team's 14. To give up. Nice a pass, nice again. play. And a good conversion by Ellison Baranu. He's now got four. Big lift off the bench. Stemke, great give. Step couldn't get the conversion. Mm. Losing the ball. Yeah, that's... Great reverse layup, Eric Berger. That's two we've seen. Now 16-10. Redmond, and that is the end of the first period. Great job coming off the bench by Aaron Redmond to score eight points of his team's 16.
16-10 at the end of one. It's been a good first first quarter here. Um, Boy, we talk about uh, Baranu coming off the bench. He really gave Edge with a lift. He did. He absolutely did. I mean, you can see some of the things that he can do and, you know, a couple of the things that he has to work on. So 16-10, our score after one. Jordan Stemke with four points and with eight points is Aaron Redmond for Edgewood. Bob, it's what we hope to see, and that is Edgewood with its up-tempo, run and gun, and then Seamilton Wright kind of slows it down, runs sets. Stemke, of course, is the great athlete on the floor that seems to be able to do whatever he wants to do on yeah, the floor. Yeah, but, but the Seamilton Wright kids have, have basketball acumen. Yeah. And, and, and they can press them full court. They can press, quote, athletes full court. And, and uh, you know, I'm not sure ath how many athletes, but they can press them full court and not get beat yeah. for easy layup. So, um, impressed with a lot of talent on both sides. Redmond, especially, this young man came off the bench and has really made a difference for Seymour. Big right. difference. He, uh, he's another athlete that can score. We give John Billy some uh, credit. He did a nice job on Stimke, limiting Stimke's ability to make open shots. Well, they, they, they play three kids on them, and, and, and each of the three kids, yeah. you know, have done a, a very nice job. Stimke has scored uh, 48 points in the last game. Against, but it's uh, it's early, Boston. and, um, you know, scorers have ways of finding their time. <laughs> so here we go in the second period now. Edgewood with the ball. Morano outside gets rid of it. That's a good thing. Taken away by Edgewood. Tuttle. Stemke up. Boom! Jordan Stemke. Well, see, I mean, you let him get loose on a situation like that. And, and like I said, the scorers find their way. And, uh, you know, the athleticism to just take that ball and do what he did with it. A nice job by DeAndre Maxwell. It was. Stimke. He cut through and made the basket. Remind you that Stemke is 6'4". So a dunk taken off from near the foul line. That's not a bad deal. Oh, no, he has some ups. He really <laughs> has some ups. Redmond looking to give it up, does so. Step with the ball. Back to Stempke. Corporal on him. Tuttle. Shot clock down to three. Shot is going to be off the back of the rim, up and no good. Yep. And then we, we do have a shot clock. We didn't have that for so many years. It's a 30-second shot clock. Yeah. We got down to three seconds. Probably not the shot that uh, John Stephanie's wanted to have taken. But well, I mean, he was open at the top of the key, and maybe there was a reason he was open, but he was open at the top of the key. And Not sure about Eric Berger's three-point action. And everybody thought, hey, you know, I should be able to shoot this, and nobody's on me. Might be a reason nobody's on him, but... <laughs> Oh, but I don't know him well enough to. Dylan Sander back in the game, number 33 for C. Milton. Tuttle. Ledman. Stempke. Corporal on him. Ledman. Open. Shoots it. Off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound almost goes from the basket. Taken away by Berger. Good offensive rebound. Tuttle with the drive. The give. Great block from behind, Redman. Off the back of the rim, off the backboard, no good. Look up. Well, give Tuttle a lot of credit. This young man off the bench is hustling. He's the guy we saw leave about three quarters of his skin yep. on the floor. Yeah, you know, the, the rule in high school basketball, when you get a rebound, you should always look up. You never know if you got a guy under the other basket by, on your team by himself for a nice, easy basket. John Billy back in the ball game, the number 11 for Edgewood, the young Whoa. man with the red hair that you can see. Although the one thing I have to say about the court at C. Milton Wright is there's a hang down that comes down over the court. And that honestly is very, very close to being in play for long passes, hmm. if not in play. Yeah, this is one of the older gyms, of course, in the county, goes back to 1980. The block there, Verano has the ball blocked. Stemke is going to be fouled. And again, we saw the example of what uh, the coach was telling us that, uh, you know, that's the play that you need to go up and jam that ball down two hands. Yeah. Talking about Verano. 
Kaczynski to the line now. He'll be shooting too. Well, yeah, the problem was where he caught the ball, it was kind of a little bit behind his head. Yep. And that brought the ball down to another guy to jump up and grab it rather than in front of your head. Yep. You're not a seven footer when you bring it down. Nope. Sentry rolls it in. Shooters roll. Bob, I never seemed to get that shooter's roll. Perhaps it was because <laughs> I was not a shooter. That could have been the reason. Mm -hmm. I've just figured that out after all these years. Shooters get the shooter's roll. It's a reason. <laughs> I don't know it either, but there is a reason. Morano with the rebound. Now see here, here here's C, C. Milton in a one-two-one press, one-one press. And you know, they're telling you that the Edgewood athleticism doesn't doesn't yeah. put them in fear. Yeah. Billy. And you can see it, 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 it hasn't led to an easy score. Corporu, that's Jameer, has loses the ball. Stemke. Stemke did a really nice job of getting in the way and setting himself. Stemke from the corner. Bounces around, no good. Block by Baranhu, saying, get that stuff out of here. Stemke gives it up. You know, that was backcourt. Redmond. Because he caught, he, he jumped from the side, he was in the air, and he caught the ball in the backcourt. Yeah, that's a good call, Bob. Redmond, no good. Rebound. And that's it, good. Led to two points. Yep. You got, that's Sandler. Or Sander, I should got, say. His first two. Elson got hit in the head down here at the other ends. Yeah, we got a man down. Uh -huh. Elson Verano. Somebody jumped up high enough to hit him in the head. My goodness, he must have hit the rim. What do you think? <laughs> Again, we always say what a treat it is to have on hand these trainers that come out there now. It's it's fantastic. It's 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 Coach Munchko says, yes, I'm concerned about my player, but let's let the medical expert find out exactly what's happening with it. I can tell you the difference of when I was coaching at Aberdeen and I was coaching at Johns Hopkins. And I can tell you, I slept really easy at night when I was at Hopkins when something happened. John Simpson, the athletic, uh, I should say the assistant principal, consulted. Not sure exactly what's happened here as Elson Baranho down on his back. Our score 21 12, 4 41 left in the half. I didn't see exactly what happened, Bob. I was watching the play. I, I didn't either. I was, it looked like it was just a, a flailing arm that hit him in the side of the head. Or, or on the shoulder, I'm, I'm not sure, but he looks like he's holding something. I don't know how much pain he's in. Um, You're watching on your screen where we're just watching the center court where the officials are waiting for action to resume. Right. Under the basket, under the Edgewood defensive basket. Now, if he, if he has to go, if, he, if they're gonna take him to the hospital or anything, then they need to check to see if the parents here, either parents, and if not, then the assistant coach is going to have to go with them. And then they have to call the parent to find out, to, to meet them there, because there's other ramifications with that. Speaking of assistant coaches, Terry Monchko, assisted by Mike Griffin and Chris Beach and Tony Smith. Tony Smith, who's been with him at Edgewood back in his first iteration at Edgewood and down at BCCC, the Baltimore Community College. Just have no idea exactly what happened to Elson Barano. Terry's had an uh, illustrious career over over the years. Yeah, you look at what Terry accomplished. We're talking about Terry Munchko. Looking at some of the things that he did uh, when he was at uh, the BCC. They won 12 championships, five in the conference, four uh, regions, two districts, including a trip to the NJCAA Division II championship. So. His record, when you go back, 339 and 268, coaching at the community college level. Yes. Back at Edgewood now, a math teacher there, his second year teaching math, and uh, just so happy to see him back at Edgewood and hoping there's some continuity now. Hoping he stays program. a while. Well, you know, we talked about he's coached for 28 years, and he said, hey, I'm a coach. I love to coach. That's what I want to do. So, you know, how long he'll be at Edgewood, we hope a long time. John yeah. Stefanides, who, of course, teaches at Joppa Town and coaches here at Seamilton and Wright, has coached now for 10 years. And uh, he is one of those guys, Bob, who is a, a gym rat, a, a yes. coach who loves basketball. 
They're talking now, it looks like an elbow injury. Yeah. yeah it looks like that they're gonna wrap the elbow and to immobilize that. Looks like they are calling for perhaps an ambulance, ambulance or someone to come. Yeah. We're stopped here at 21-12 to score. Seamilton Wright has led all the way. They led eight to nothing at one point. Now they're up with that nine point lead. 441 left in the first half. Seven points for Jordan Stimpy, eight it, it, for it, Aaron Redmond. Uh, it, it's been the kind of game that I, I in some respects, I, I've expected it to be. Uh, C. Milton Wright, you know, it, Coach Stephanidis has been here for a while. This is Coach Munchko's first year. You know, he's trying to instill his system. It doesn't happen right away. Uh, he, he's only been coaching him for, for a month. Um, Coach Stephanie's has been here for, for, you know, the number of years he has, and yep. his system is in great shape. The kids know what they're doing. They, they play JV basketball, and uh, they're well coached. They're well taught. And, um, you know, I, I it, it, this is really what I've expected. Yeah. Coach Munchko, we were talking to, he really likes this JV team. They're undefeated. They almost lost a game that they should have won easily in the, the JV game tonight. Yes. But Seymour and Wright came back and made a very close game of it. But you look at some of those players on that JV of Edgewood and, you know, think about next year. Those kids are going to be stars at the varsity level. Well, there's going to be a lot of sophomores who are going to play next year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then they become juniors and seniors. And when they become juniors and seniors, they're going to be really good basketball players. And, and that's why I hope he stays, because I think he can develop them into, yeah. you know, a very, very solid basketball team and make Edgewood a solid basketball program again. Bob, you and I were so impressed with Seamilton Wright, a team that they could have given up, talking about the JV game. They were down by like 15, 18 points. They came all the way back, back to within two points, had a chance to take the lead. That takes a lot of courage, a lot of perseverance, a lot of, you know, hey, we're not giving up. We're still in this ball game. They took it to Edgewood and forced the Rams to really pull the game out at the end. Well, we all understand what happened was Edgewood went to their bench and they put all their starters down. They were up by 16 at the time. And then the next thing you knew, they were up by seven. Yeah. And there was a little panic on the faces at that point. And then the coach put back all his starters back in. And as, as I told you earlier, when that kind of happens, He's kind of telling those kids when they come out, you're done. And so their minds go elsewhere. And it took them, when they came back, there was like three minutes left in the game. It probably took them a minute and a half or two minutes before they got themselves back organized. The, the game got cut down to, like you said, to, to, to one or whatever. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and Edgewood had to have a uh, JV team with about 30 seconds left, had to have like a six or seven point run to put the game away. Happy to say that Elson Verano is on his feet. Uh, that uh, left arm immobilized there by the trainers. Looks like he's uh, now not suffering the same kind of pain he was a moment ago. Yeah. Hopefully it's not a serious injury to Verano. Actually, with what he has right now, he literally could sit in stands and, and go home with them and get to the hospital later or tomorrow morning probably. But, you know, I talked to the parent. If you call the parent and talk to the parent and yep. get them... There you see a picture yeah. of Donnie and Mickey, the uh, athletic director here on the right uh, from C. Milton Wright, the coaches, mm -hmm. and John Steph uh, John Seamson, the uh, assistant principal here at C. Milton Wright. Mm -hmm. He was at Edgewood up until last year, so he's wearing his Towson shirt out of deference to the Edgewood people who know him and the C. Milton Wright people who are his new family. Yeah. Kind of difficult when you have a break up like that and uh, you know some of your it is tough some of your people that you knew for so many years yeah it, it is tough i can remember when i went to aberdeen coaching at aberdeen and went into the edgewood gym you know the first time and feeling uh oh i'm back yeah, home yeah. but at least there were some years separated there was when you played in the 60s and you were coaching in the 80s so right well the yeah. 70s i was coaching in the 70s yeah, that's true the late 70s yeah, so yeah, so but that's a few years, maybe that generation that passed. Well, uh, yeah, there, there was enough, and in, in, um, the only, you yeah, know, so. We're about ready to resume this game. Now, there's uh -oh. been about a, a 10 minute lapse, maybe 15 minutes. What does that do to you as players? Yeah, we've been told that 
Moranu now will be taken uh, by ambulance. There's an ambulance outside, and probably a good thing to go have an x-ray and find out exactly uh -huh. what I'm happened. I'm sure they called his parents and talked to them, and, and they said, yes, do it, and they'll meet them there, wherever they're taking them. So, but he looks, he, he looks, you know, good enough now that he's, you know, things, hopefully with the injury and everything, things will be fine. Edgewood with the ball, and right away they score. Marcus Hicks gets the two-pointer, so the Rams come now back within seven. Now we've got the uh, Jameer Carpool on him. Yeah. Uh, on, on Quigley. On Stenke, who gets the shot away, and the foul is going to be called. Jordan Stenke, the senior six foot four, third year player. Yeah. He'll go to the line, he'll shoot too. Bob, you made the point how Edgewood very adroitly, uh, Coach Munchko has switched off and he's had three or four different players on. This is the fourth one now. Yeah. They're trying to keep his players fresh to chase them and, you know, try to force them and and do some things with them, but Stenke quietly is getting his points. And he does get three free throws. He missed the first one. He's now two for four from the line, is Stenke. Eight points. Off the front of the rim, no good. Looks like it's off Edgewood. Yeah. It was. It was, off, it was off Hicks. Mustangs will get the ball back. 22-14. So if you're looking for a kink in Stensky's game right now, he's missed three of his five free throws. Redmond to Tuttle. Redmond. And back to Tuttle. That's Aaron Clark. Travel is going to be called. Yeah, he shuffled his feet a little bit, trying to get his feet in better position. You can see the game flow has sort of slowed down that 15 minute, you know, no, it stoppage has. of play. Into the ball game for the first time for Seymour like the right is number two, Tommy Murphy. And Rock goes back in the ball game, Wolosowski. Driving one-hander, won't fall. Polosowski battling for the ball. He and Eli Wilson tied up. Ball it is C. Milton's ball. Yep, on the alternating possession rule. Remember back in the day, Bob, used to be a jump ball? Yes. Which slowed the game down. I like that rule change, don't you? Yes. Stemke. You can see how unselfish Stempke is. Pass the ball yes. away, intercepted. High off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Edgewood. Oh, that ball came right back to them. The basket there by Eli Wilson. That wasn't drawn up that way, but it did work out there. Intercepted, here comes Edgewood. Oh, nice spin. That's DeAndre Maxwell. Maxwell with the ball, gives it up outside. Maxwell, great pass, Maxwell can't convert. Well, that was a nice look right there, it really was. Good play by Trent Alexander. The only problem was the kid who received the pass was in a very difficult place yeah. to put the ball in the basket. Alexander on a great play by knocking it off the Seam Milton right defender. 22-16, inside three minutes left in the half. Terry's still running that block-to-block -block screen on the out-of-bounds plate, and if you don't get it, you kick it back and you start your offense. Really interesting to hear coaches talk about out-of-bounds plays. Good job defensively by C. Milton Wright. Redmond with the ball. There's two theories on that. On the out-of-bounds, one theory is that if you're very good in a half-court offense, just get it in and set your half-court offense up because you score 50% of the time off your half-court offense. The other theory is you try to get the easiest basket you can off of the, the out-of-bounds play. And um, if you don't, then you try to set it back up. Eric, Mur Eric Berger, I should say, back in the ball game for C. Milton Wright. Look Two up. Ah. Seconds. Taken away. That's Polosowski. 
Redmond thinks about the three, gives it up. Stemke. Jameer Corporal on him. Stemke gets the screen, gets it back out front. I, I, I like the fact that Stemke, Stemke is not, um, he's really a team player. He's not a ball hog at all. I mean, he, you know, he had an opportunity. He could have taken that kid yep. to the basket, the defender to the basket. And, yeah, and this is know. a kid that had 48 points in the last game. Yeah. You know, so now he's getting the rest of his team involved. And so now John Billy's back in the ball game, and now they're switching back. John Billy's going to play him. Stimpke, good job by Billy cutting him off. And Berger, you, Berger, nice move, good basket. And it's really funny, Jameer Kofu told him, no, no, I'll play him, I got him. Oh, yeah. You know, so I like that. Good no-look pass, driving. Good defensive play by Seamoth and Wright. Yeah. Mustangs come away with the ball. Minute and 39 counting left in the half. Stemke driving, gives it up, looking for the corner three, no good. Stemke with the rebound. Looks like he may be fouled on the play. Well, he was kind of mugged a little. <laughs> kind of mugged. <laughs> he wasn't fouled. <laughs> Eli Wilson uh, sort of gave him the, uh, the mugging treatment, mm. if you will. Hey. Stemke shooting one and one. Then the 29 left and a half here. It's what's really been quiet this quarter. You know, with the injury to, to Elson and uh... Stempke with the free throw. He's now made three of six. Makes them both. So now quietly he has what eight points? Yep. Well, nine. Yeah. Nine. Okay. Actually, ten. Now, if you look at my notes. He's got uh, four oh, yeah, free ten, yep. Six points. He has two, four, six this quarter and four the last quarter. So, yeah. you know, quietly he's at 10 now, so. Averaging 28 points a ball game. And if this game wouldn't get any closer, he could, you know, he could get to that figure if he really, if yeah. they really needed him to. Deion Mex in the ball game for Edgewood, number 12. First time we've seen him, junior five foot nine. Yeah. Billy sits down. Coach Stephanie has told me that um, that Stemke was a, a great athlete, and he is. You can tell that. Shoots the ball really very, you know, fairly well, which he does, and um, and handles the ball fairly well for a. And as you mentioned, a very unselfish player. Yep. Oh, nice That's give and go. It was. To handle it. Corpru gives it up through Redmond's legs. Taken away. A lot of battle for the ball. Tied up. Possession error, Edgewood. Rams will keep it with a minute three. Down by 10 at 26-16. Oh. Had it there. <laughs> Didn't he wasn't paying attention. Yeah. You know, the, the guy who was paying attention was the guy who had the ball out of bounds. And they... 30 second shot clock. And they weren't paying attention on the 30 second yeah. shot clock, which. Well, you think yeah, the ball went out of bounds, but they didn't lose possession, so the clock no. continues. Exactly. Yeah. There's only like four seconds left. Stemke driving. Nice job. Looks like the defensive play made there by number 13, Eli Wilson. And Stemke carries the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Where did I get? Looks like Stempke thought he had a free reign to the basket. Well, he did, except that he put it in his right hand, which is the inside hands, to the basket, and that gave it an opportunity for, for the Edgewood defender to get his hand in there and get a piece of it. DeAndre Maxwell with the basket. Great pass by Dion Metz. Maxwell now with four. Ball goes over to Edgewood, down by eight. 31 seconds left. Boy. Boy, Bob, it has been a sloppy second period, especially after that play. It has. Started. Both teams uh, having trouble controlling the ball. Nice rebound by Redmond, hangs on to the ball, gets rid of it now. Berger, 15 seconds, Redmond with the three, good! Aaron Redmond, he's now got 11. Ball bounce around, it's Stimke, three seconds, two seconds, Shoots it from three, it's no good off the front of the rim. 
and that will end our half at 29 to 18. He has an inside left to right turn on the ball when he goes to the left and he puts that hand up, almost twist the shot as he goes up. That's really not the, uh, let's say, the standard way to do that shot? Nah, you, you, you'd like to keep that hand still and, 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 and shoot it so you get the backspin at you rather than spinning away from you. So 10 points in the half for Jordan Stemke. 11 now for Aaron Redmond. They're leading the C. Milton Wright with 29. Meantime, for Edgewood, it looks like uh, four points for DeAndre Maxwell in a very divided, and four points also for uh, Borano before he went out in mm -hmm. a divided effort by the Edgewood Rams. So 11-point yes. difference here. You've seen the C. Milton Wright Mustangs do what they want to do, play under control, the, not be intimidated by the, the athleticism the, of Edgewood. The, the Redding three was a... a a bit, it was 26-18 at the point. Edgewood yeah. missed, and then they countered and hit the three. So instead of it being 26-20 at the half, you know, it's now an 11 point, and it's instead of six, it's 11 at 29-18. Yeah. Well, we'll take a break here at halftime. We'll come back. Our score, 29-18. The C. Milton Wright Mustangs looking to go four in a row, go to four and one over Edgewood. We'll be back in a moment. We're back with you at C. Milton Wright High School where the Mustangs of C. Milton have a halftime lead of 29-18 over Edgewood. Bob, it's been an interesting ball game uh, punctuated by that 15-minute delay when the Baranhu, Elson Baranhu, was taken care of in terms of that elbow injury. We're praying that he's fine and okay and it's nothing more than a sprain, but I'm sure the medical folks will find that out. But that just seemed to put a damper on everything, the enthusiasm here. And also the play of both teams was a little sporadic after that. Yeah, it sort of it just kind of flattened out after that. And yeah. um, un until the, till the you know almost the very end when it, it got it, the score went to 26 to 18 in favor of C. Milton, and Edgewood was driving to the basket and they they missed the shot or got blocked, and C. Milton threw the ball out and they came down and. Um, uh, Aaron, Aaron Redmond. Aaron, yeah, Aaron Redmond got mm -hmm. in the spot for the three, and they hit him with the pass, and he drained the three, and then Edgewood had a chance to win a 26-20, you know, which would have been a six-point lead, and, mm -hmm. and um, with that shot, it was 29-18, which ended the half, and so it put C. Milton up by 11, and um, you know, it's been that kind of game. It's, yeah. it's been it's it's been a good game in spots to watch. Um, you know, we've been impressed a little bit with the defenders that, that have played um, against Stemke, mm -hmm. but um, he quietly has, you know, how many points in the half? He's got 10. He's yeah. got 10 points in the half. Nope. Um, you know. Please remember HCPS's mask policy. Again, the mask policy being uh, reiterated here to everyone in the stands. And, you know, we're just so happy, Bob, that we'll wear these masks if that's what it takes to get to be able to do ball games. We'll gladly do it. That's for sure. Well, here we go now, the last 16 minutes of the game. It's an 11 point lead for C. Milton Light. The Mustangs have won three in a row, looking to make it four in a row. It's a two and two. Big county game for both teams, big up back game. We're underway, Redmond with the basketball. Berger starting, Stemke number 11 in the ball game. Uh, John, John Billy and, and Jordan Stemke were laughing at each other at, at half court before it start the game, but Stemke gets free like that off of the screen and he just bangs a 15 footer, you know. He you, just you, looks so good. I mean, the shot is good, yeah, but he looks, the form is so perfect. Almost has a steal. Yeah, it, when, when he's still, when he goes up and down, straight up and down, his form is really, really good facing the basket. When he goes left or right, it's it's yeah. a little bit different. Um, and yet, years ago when I coached Tommy Davis at Aberdeen, he loved to go to the left and stop and shoot that jumper. But he always squared back up, even if he went that way, and, and that was his favorite shot. So like your right-handed quarterback going to the left. Edgewood now down by 13. Nice give and go. Can't convert. Foul is going to be called. Yeah. Looks like the foul is going to go against uh, number 33, Dylan Sander. Yeah, it was Jameer Carpro right there, and I, th I thought he was going to make that, that layup because yeah. he's pretty good around the basket. Jameer Corpru and his twin brother, Jamar Corpru. Is he bleeding? One and two.
A new player in the ball game for Edgewood. Cameron Rankin comes in, number five. Well, wait a minute. Uh, he was a free throw shooter, wasn't he? Now they're going to bring Rankin in to shoot the free throw. Well, he must have been. He must have been the one who came came in for him. Just now, yes. Yes. Well, right. that's the free throw shooter then. Makes the first, despite all the noise by the Singleton Knight faithful. Well, that's that's a good substitute. Yeah. Bring kid in to make the free throws. Exactly. Makes them both. Rankin coming off the bench. That's Ooh. the first two points of the night. Berger almost a backcourt. Stenke was able to get across. That was close, Bob. Yeah, it was. Redmond. Berger. Stenke to Sander. Sander. Nice top pop one hander, no good though. Gets his own rebound. That's Polosowski. Polosowski with another rebound. Stemke rises up and see, good. see square. He was right into that. You know, bounced it right into the jump, square to the basket, and everything looked really, really good on that jump shot. And he was going to his right. Up in the air, unable to come down with the ball. Throws it away. It's a lot harder to square up on your left to be completely square. You really have to work on that to be good at that. But he's good straight up and he's really good going to the right. So I'm sure at some point he'll work on that. Can they be good that way? Finley and missing the layup. I had to show both that one instead of just putting it up off the glass. And Redman, great pass, great block underneath. The job there by uh, Trent Alexander from Edgewood to make that block. Looking for three off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound Stamper, or I should say Sander. Redmond gives it up, Kolosowski, back to Redmond. Back out front to Berger. 5.42 left and counting in the third. Stimke. Berger loses the ball. Oye Kunli. Oye Kunli is on Stemke now. John yeah. Billy's out of the ball games. Now we got the fifth defender on him. Oye Kunli, whom we saw in uh, Edgewood's football team, a great tight end for Edgewood. Number 14, first time we've seen him in the ball game. 5-31, it's a 13-point lead for the Seabilt and Wright Mustangs. It's got that David Ruffin look at the Temptations with the, with the black <laughs> glasses and the uh, now see, the younger audience is going to say the who? who? Look them up. The what? <laughs> Look them up. Temptations, 1960s soul group. I guess they're more like R&B. Yeah, soul R&B, yep. Yeah. The very Motown good. sounds. Oh, they're very good. Folks are now going to their Google trying to figure out Temptations. Hmm. What is that? Edgewood with the ball. Oye Kunli. Corfu driving, Jamar Corfu, no good. Rebound Sanders. You know, the one thing I like about the C. Milton Wright kids when they defend, as soon as somebody take, goes to take that shot, they all get off their guy going to the board to, yeah. to rebound. Up good. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's an excellent, excellent. He, he's going to be a scorer all his life because he can shoot that shot that way. Waited for the defender to go by, went straight up, made the basket. Foul's going to be called. Looks like it's on Sander. Sander doesn't believe it. Simpke now with 16, six here in the third period. 4.46 left. Trent Alexander. The student section making some noise, and of course, the miss, they take credit for that. Yes. Yes. Trent Alexander. Yeah. If they put Arnold at the end of his name, one of the great right fullbacks in the world of soccer, plays for Liverpool, named Trent Alexander Arnold. Young man, like 23 years old. 
and he's one of the best right fullbacks in the world. So when I hear Trent Alexander, I'm just waiting for the next word. And uh, see, I, I was with you on Temptations, Trent Alexander, whatever. You had no was. idea who he I is. Have no idea. No but if he played baseball, you would. I would, of course. A real sport, a sport you can play with all the limbs you have on your body. Yes. I think soccer is a great sport. And please don't let me say anything negative about soccer. It's the soccer. best in the world. Uh, I wouldn't go quite that far. It's got but it's more a, fans it's, than anybody else in the world. It does. And in America, not so much. Oh, but, it's it's growing. <laughs> it's it's know, growing to the point now let, let, where there's a number of Americans, actually, who are good enough to play in Europe, and me, many of them are. Let me tell you the story that 40 years ago I had friends saying that Within 10 years, it was going to take over for baseball. And yeah, it's sports. never going to do that. I was still waiting for that. But our friend Paul Metzger is, of course, a great soccer fan. And uh, he probably even tops you in terms of being interested. He actually watches soccer games on TV. Yeah, me too. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> it all depends now. I, you know, there, there are some really boring soccer yeah. games, just like there are some really boring baseball games. Never. I was watching a soccer game the other day, but I decided instead to watch the grass grow. Oh, I right. thought it was much more yeah. interesting. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, no cards and letters, please. I was, that was a joke. Not a very good one, the, but the, a joke. the only thing slower than that is, um, what's the sport they use in England with a bat? Oh, cricket? Cricket, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. I'm going to a cricket match, dear. I'll see you in three or four days. <laughs> Oh, back to basketball, 35-21. <laughs> it's a 14-point lead for mm -hmm. Seymour Wright. They led by 11 at the half. Uh oh, now we're in a trap. The edge was into a, a zone trap now on, for a full court rather than man. Good play by Tuttle Sander. Shuffle those feet. Yep. Really been impressed by Jordan Tuttle, the second year player, six foot senior, coming off the bench, number 22 for C. Milton. He's just played a great four game. Well, you keenly almost loses the ball. Looking for the corner three pointer, long, no good. Rebound comes off to C. Milton right. Well, that was a nice play by Edgewood to get the ball down the floor without dribbles. Justin Ekman with that rebound. Yeah. Stempke. Oh, dear. For Prue on him. Looks like the foul is going to go well, against the number two, Jamar Crawford. That's one of the that's one of the rare times I've seen Stemke go to the left, and he went to the left powerfully then. But he wanted to make the pass instead of continuing to the basket. But then he's kind of that unselfish. Taken away by the Rams. Four minutes left in the third. Basket. Good job. A running one-hander. Eric, Eric Berger has actually done a very nice job tonight. Um, he's gone to the basket very well. This is his first year on the varsity. Uh, he's a junior, so he'll be back next year to give some stability to, to the program when those JV players come up. Um, well point lead now. For Mustangs. Stemke in and out on the three corner, but it rolls in. Again, the shooter's roll. Yeah, it was a bit. Because um, again, he was square and it was up in the air. 38 23. Block from behind. Foul will be called. That was Kolosowski fouling. This was a this was about the score of the JV game when C. Milton Wright came back hard. Maybe we can get a, a reverse here and get Ezra to come back hard and make it a game for the last quarter. Marcus Hicks cleanly through. His third point of the night. Tommy Murphy back in the, Tommy Murray, I should say, back in the game for Seymour tonight. Second one cleanly through. Hicks with four. 13 point game again. Stenley. Stenke, bad pass taken away by Edgewood. That's Maxwell. Maxwell steals the pass and makes the basket. 
Ooh, good job by Maxwell. Yeah, I, I messed up the last time. I said it was Berger, the other number four. It's Maxwell who's done a nice job. Can't come down with it, throw it backwards if nothing else. <laughs> That's when you get up in the air and you say, now what do I do? Yeah, you throw it backwards under your own basket. Trent Alexander with the walk. Down to an 11-point game now for the Rams. Timeout called, 2.58 left in the third. Seamilton Mike coming in with a three-game winning streak. They lost their first game of the year. It was good to see the principal Edgewood High School, Kilo Mack, here at halftime come up to give us a, his condolence. I mean, say hello to us. Yeah, he he, he was actually nice to us, I, which I found a little difficult. But, uh, you know, Kilo Mack, one of the great, great uh, individuals uh, that we've had the pleasure of knowing, principal at Edgewood. Back-to-back -back state titles at Joppa Town back in the early 90s. When he was a player at Joppa Town. Yeah. I mean, that was uh, Mike Bowers' teams back in 1991. They were just awesome. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I had finished coaching at Aberdeen at the time, so I really didn't get to see them, but I knew some of the kids who played for them, and they were very, very talented, including Kilo. Yep. Kilo was the glue for that team. Maybe not the most talented player on the team, but he was the guy that was in charge and the guy that, you know, everybody looked to as the leader of that team. And that's he what was he a leader. He was a principal. I mean, he, he was definitely a leader. Two minutes, 58 seconds left in the third. Rocco Polosowski, Stimke double team, back to Polosowski. Oye Kunli on him. It's a nice defensive job right there. That was really a nice defensive job by him. Oye Kunli? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. He stayed square the whole time, frustrated Stemke to the point where Stemke pushed him and got the foul. Yeah. And I mean, you're a good player, that happens to you. If you, you, don't go, if you can't do what you think you could just normally do, sometimes you get frustrated and act out. Yeah. First time we've seen that happen today. Oh, nice tip by himself, to himself. Can't get it to fall. And that was the Andre Maxwell. Now here it's the reverse. Yeah. Where Stempke starts to beat him to the right. And Ogie Kinley uh, mm -hmm. puts a little body on him. Yep. That's fun. That's a nice confrontation. If I'm Stempke, this is like, what, the fifth player they put on him tonight? Yeah, he is the fifth player they put on him. Hey, whatever it takes. I'm not sure it was planned that way, but Sander gets the conversion. Well, he was in the right place at the right time, and Jordan Ross lost the ball. Sander got it, got the two points. Jamar Cooper, scoop one-hander, won't fall, rebound Stimpke, uh. foul over the back. Fouls against Marcus Hicks. Uh, that was, he tried to invent a shot going to the basket rather than shooting the, the layup, and hopefully you get fouled. Stemke fouled on the play. It's, it's a good be, call by the official. Yeah, it's going to be a, an intentional foul, a flagrant foul. Yep. It's a good call. Oh, he cleanly sort of pushed him as he went up off. And he the grabbed him because he didn't want to. He didn't want him to dunk on him. Yeah. And which so, could have happened. So it's a technical foul now for Stemke. Yes. 151 left in the third. It's a 13-point lead for Singleton, right? They've led all the way. They led 8-0 early on. Shooter's roll. Yeah, I, I, I think he should be a very, very good free throw shooter. That's 10 points in this period alone. He's got 20 on the night. Mm -hmm. Now 21. Yeah, see, like I said, and, 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 and they're all, I mean, it's, they were all quiet points for third quarter. I yeah. got, you know, a yeah. couple of nice threes, you know, jump shots. Did, did he have a couple of those? He got one, one three. Uh, one three. He's got three twos and yeah. a, a three and a two free throws. Going up. Got it. Three pointers. See that? But you see from our angle how that ball was going spinning left to right. 
Of course, it probably helped, probably helped that shot going to basket. Nice look. Oye Kunle won't fall, gets his own rebound. Rebound now comes off Polozowski. This game could minutes. get out of hand right here, Don, before we even get to the fourth quarter, 18-point lead. Redmond foul, not foul, but blocked, blocked by Billy. Actually, that was a very nice block, too, was. Up in the air, came down, lost the ball, Sander with it. Redmond gives it up, three-pointer no good from the far side. That is Ross with that three-point attempt. When we see Milton Ball, they're leading by 18 with 57.5 seconds left in the third. That's 14 points, Bob, in this period alone by Stimpy. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, I mean, he's getting the ball now, and he's looking a little bit more for his shot. He's still passing it to his teammates, but uh, when he, you know, now when he gets the opportunity, he's just finishing. Nice conversion by John Billy. His fourth point of the night. Rocco Polisowski gets up a little bit of a limp going on. Mm. Looks like he may have came down on his uh, tailbone. Yeah. That was that, a good uh, thud. That hurts. It does. We played uh, when I was at Hartford Community College back in those days, Hartford Junior College. We played at St. Mary's School down in uh, Southern Maryland. They had a gym floor that was the hardest floor I've ever felt. It's little tiny uh, wood strips. I came down like that on that and I thought the world had come to an end. That was 60 years ago, I remember that. Did you ever play up at Kennerdale High School in Southern Pennsylvania? Yeah. Their floor, remember that floor? Yeah. yeah. It was. I can't even describe what it was. It, it had blocks, and I wasn't sure whether they were cement or something else. Aaron Clark with the first point of the night for him. 46-29 the lead. Rolls out, no good. Rebound off to DeAndre. Good Mantua. look. And the basket, that's by Jameer Corkrew. 25 seconds left in the third. 15-point lead for Seamus and Wright. Redmond has it stripped. Great pass, great conversion, but it's two good plays by Maxwell. He's played well. Max. He really Maxwell has played well the whole night. Sander won't fall. Look up, look up. Rebound Eli Wilson. Two seconds, one second, and that'll end the third period with a 13-point lead for Seamus and Wright. Well, we were saw that period the Jordan Stemke show. He had, uh, what, 16, let's see, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 points in that third period alone. He's got 24 now, just four short of his um, season's average. You see, it, it, what he proves is that you can let the game come to you and you can get yours. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't have to force it and he doesn't. He can give passes to his teammates and let them score and he does you know but when when he when he needs a score he can get himself in a position to score you know quietly quickly and make the game look easy and then when the game's over you said how many did he have yeah i didn't see him have that many yeah yeah, yeah. and again done in a very unselfish way like you said bob when a situation presents itself and his team needs it yeah. he just turns it on Yes. Otherwise, he's looking to make everybody else I mean, better. If they had, if they let him handle the ball and be a point guard a lot. If they pushed him over to the two guard spot and let him kick out and run the floor on a rebound and throw the ball down the court, he might have 50. Yeah. You know. But his value to his team at that point guard position is so important. So here we go. Eight minutes left. A 13 point lead for C. Milton Wright. The Mustangs looking to go. Four and one on the season. Well, nice interception by Edgewood. Ball out of bounds. That was a good play by Jameer Corfrew. He sort of duped the Edgewood. I mean, yep. Seemed like right a play to throw the ball. And they stepped right in the passing alley. Yep. Redmond will sit down. Tuttle will come in to replace him. 
22 for 11. That same block to block screen. Don't have it, kick it out to the guard, and then they run a version of. Um, whoa, that's a three point shot that came out of nowhere. Not sure if the coach Munchko would like that shot done again. Tuttle picks the ball up. It's Shamira Corfu. You know, the, one, the one thing the one thing I want to say is every one of the kids defensively who have played against Stunky have really taken pride into trying to stop him. Yeah. And yet he still has 24. Yeah. Second offensive foul of the night called against Stinky. That's going to happen. Bad pass out of bounds. You know, when, when, when you have that kind of ability, you're going to you're going to try to blow by people at times and. Bob, just a little bit of chippiness out there now. Stinky yeah. unhappy about some of the fouls. There, there are things you can, you know, in his case, he should just ignore that because it's. Stinky double team gets rid of it. Berger. Nice play. Good takeaway by Edgewood. You know, you look up at the score, you're up by 13. You don't want to get in a contest like that because Eli Wilson with that takeaway. Well, that's a nice uh, I'm move. telling you, he's, he's a good, Maxwell. good player. He's got eight. He must have them all the second half. Yeah, yeah, just four in the first half and four here in the second half. Four, that's the second half I watched him make. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Two, four, six. Foul called. It looks like... Two, four, six, eight, ten. He's got ten. Brandon Stepp with that. Yeah go to the line now, shooting two. In, in some respects, this game should have been put away a while ago. On the other hand, Edgewood keeps playing and trying hard and keep fighting to keep it, you know, into a, a, an 11 to, you know, 17 point game. Nice free throws by Steph, his first two of the night. Puts the lead back up to 13. Can't get it fall that time, Maxwell. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Edgewood. Probably right, he has played quietly. DeAndre Maxwell, the six foot three junior, just played a nice ball game. Looks like he comes up limping. He got, looked like he got kicked in his knee. He'll have to sit down for a while. Coming in is Jamar Corpru. You know what they you know what they would tell you in the old days. Just walk it off. <laughs> yeah. Why the bone sticking out? And yeah, the... yeah. But Coach's famous line was, you're not hurt. Well, but I have some my... other famous lines he told me. Coach, my bone is sticking on my body. That's okay. Oh, that's a nice play. Corpru. Gets it to fall. Jamar Corfu, left-handed, gets it to fall. His first two of the night. He could make the old-fashioned three-point play here and pull it within 10 points. Bob, you made a good point a moment ago. It seems like this game should have been put away a long time ago, but now he makes his free throw. They're back within 10. And that's incredible. Still six minutes left, which anything can happen in six minutes. We saw that in the JV game. He doesn't call iron, so it will be seen open right ball. I saw a high school game with a minute 27 left in the game and one team down by seven and win by seven. Wow. Step has it blocked. Corpru, Jameer Corpru. Step had the layup but fumbled the ball and wasn't able to get it up in time. No. He had to get an extra bouncing, I think, rather than just turn and get that ball up before the people got near him. Yeah. Step will sit down. Inside six minutes now left in the game. An 11 point lead for Seamilton Wright. 
Rams looking to get in single digits. Well, they've got to. Taken away, fumbled, picked up by Justin Ekman. Back up front, Stenke. Up with the jumper. That was a tougher shot. That was in traffic to his left, pulling back, leaning back. That's that's not his shot. And I think the folks can see, Bob, what you were talking about. That's that kind of side spin on that shot when he's going to his left. Yep. Rams taking it away. Again, they could get back in single digits. Floating one-hander, won't go. Rebound won't go. Rebound Sander. Now Tuttle. That's a double dribble, wasn't it? Well, it depends. He, he knocked it down, so maybe he never had control. Okay. Stemke has the ball knocked away, and he's fouled. You can see it's getting a little physical out there. Well, he's getting Stemke. a little frustrated because, you know, some things aren't working for him, and and that play, I thought he actually had an offensive foul. I thought he hit him with an elbow when he See, started his I, first I dribble. I agree with that, Bob. I was surprised it wasn't called. Yeah. Gets it to fall. Got to be careful not to step across that line before the ball hits the rim. Yep. That was close. And I don't know why he's leaning that way anyway, because the way he shoots the basketball when he's square, which he is at the free throw line, you know, he's an exceptional shooter that way. Like that, that should be a, you know, that shot should go in for him all, almost all the time. He gets his own rebound. Looking for three, front of the rim, no good. Rebound by Edgewood's Eli Wilson. He's fouled. In the bonus, uh, looks like he'll be shooting Wilson Will one and one. Yeah, I think Coach Stephanie's is a little upset because He's telling the player, you know, we really, we just talked about not doing that. And as soon as we come back out here, you did it. Yeah. And, and so he's going to make a yeah. replacement. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to do that. Missing the first, comes back out to edge. We're taken away by Rather Tuttle. Rather than Tuttle with the pass to Stenke. Tuttle to Stenke. Rather than grabbing the basketball, the Edgewood player tried to dribble it. And that's an automatic no-no. And see, Milton Wright player took it. And they went down and Stumpke put it in the basket. And that's off an edge of the player also. And now that run is stopped. It's back up to 14. Yep. And, and a great and, and, pass by Tuttle to Stumpke. Yeah, and here's the next thing. Now Aaron Redmond's back in the ball game who played very, very well for C. Milton Wright. So I'm not sure you, I, I, if I was the edge of coach, I'd be happy with him on the bench. <laughs> edge within that ball court. Press broken easily. Tuttle. And now Stimke. Oh, you couldn't lean on him. Stimke loses the ball, gets it back. Stimke thinks about the three, gives it up to Polozowski, who loses it to O'Kinley. Coming up on the four minute mark left in the game. 14 point lead for Edgewood. I should say for C. Milton Wright. Foul's gonna be called. I don't think the game has been within single digits since early in that first period. No, it hasn't been. Every time Edgewood's made a run, C. Milton Wright has had the answer. Well, you know, except for the one that, that first C. Milton Wright run that took it up to 12 or 14 or 16, you know, there's never been a run by either team. Beyond Metz. I don't think you have to call bank in this game. Do you? No, I guess that counts. That's the old joke about it. if it goes in off the backboard, you have to call bank before you did it. Yeah. This time cleanly for it. Yeah, when you bank one the first time, then you stick it through cleanly the second time, you kind of wonder what kind of shooters letting that ball go. Good job by Polisovsky being able to recover that ball on the double team. Berger. 
Stemke. Now Bledman, back to Berger. Inside, good ball movement, turn around, jump. Nice, nice, nice turn around. Yeah, that's a tough shot. I, you have to work on that shot to be good at it. And Bob, that play was really well done. Move the ball quickly. Well, I like the way he posted up and I like the way he moved his body and got free under strength. He still had his strength and control. Good pass, can't convert. Rebound still won't go. Lean back in and put it up. Get in the air and put it up. Running one-hander, Redmond front rim, no good. Redmond gets the rebound, but the burger inside three minutes now. Block is going to be called. The Seymour to right student body. Doing some chastising against the Edgewood player. Yeah, it's telling them you can't do that. And they're right, yeah. you can't do that. You can do it, but it's gonna cost you a foul. Berger misses. Oh, doesn't draw iron. Well, you could do that if you're gonna get a free throw shot like that, and then you can get the ball back and... Yeah. 14 point lead. Inside, three minutes left. No look pass and nobody was there. Stimke gives it up, great pass. Sander with the basket. He went to the bucket, got the defense on him, passed it to Sander, easy layup. That was his whole intention. You could see when he was going to the bucket, he was looking for, who am I going to give this to? And as soon as the man stepped at him, he stopped and gave the ball. And, and, and you can see his teammates know that, they're, that he's looking for them. So they make themselves available. Yep. If you don't pass the ball, your teammates are going to stand and watch you. Yes. Ben Alexander. Rolls the first one in. Fifteen point game now, 55-40 as you see. Yes. Front of them, no good. Bedman has it taken away. Oye Kunli. And he's fouled. That should be the tenth foul, which will make it a two-shot foul. Yeah. Timmy Oyukunle, all-county football player, was Oyukunle. Doesn't count. Yeah. Lane violation, wipe that one out. Mustangs, 227 left. Edgewood, full court press. Ball to Berger. Berger back to Stinky. <laughs> Mustangs in the air, making the right pass. Shot clock down to 15, got plenty of time. Redmond, great pass, great conversion. Kolosowski. Redmond's one of those players that's sneaky good around the basket. Yeah. He's now got 13, though, Redmond. Oh, it looks like a cramp, we think. Well, if it is, stretch somebody get on at it, that, that foot and let's get him on his back and... DeAndre Maxwell with the basket. That looks like what the trainers are doing. Yep. Get him down. Bob, That's it. Like the rock the leg, get him up. experienced a cramp, oh. it's like the most painful thing. I hate those things. It just uh, feels like your whole leg is coming apart. Oh. 
And then as soon as you take that uh, toes and point them up a little bit and get the muscle to relax. Ladies and gentlemen, as we near the end of the game, this is a reminder we exit at the end of the gym or the side of the gym. 5742. Getting instructions from Donnie Mickey. Gives me a chance to thank Donnie for all the hospitality that he's provided here tonight. Also to both coaches, uh, John Stefanidis, Terry Munchko. Don't go sit on the bench, because if you sit on the bench, it's going to cramp right back up again. Walk around over there. In the old days, they used to give you salt tablets. Right, now just get some water. and Which, of course, was the opposite thing of what you should be taking. But uh, yeah, I it, think psychologically it seemed to work. 15-point lead for Singleton Wright. Polosowski, just in key. Tried the dunk, didn't get it to work that time. Looks like uh, one of the Edgewood players maybe got the hand on the ball. Well, he, he was a little under the basket and be on behind the backboard to come around on that. He couldn't get his up extension. Oh, he Kunli. Stimke gives it up. Burger foul. Good sportsmanship there by Corporu, mm -hmm. Jameer Corporu. And Eric Berger. Did the clock run yet? There's still a minute 20 left. I'm not sure. I didn't notice. Does not get the shooter's roll. Bobby mentioned Berger has played a nice game. I like Tuttle in the 22 for Seymour, both playing a nice game. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're kind of um, pieces to the puzzle that, that blend things. Yep. Cooper Hitchcock now in the ball game, the six foot five uh, junior. I mean, you, you, you've obviously got Stenke, who's the star, and then you've got Redden, who really does a lot of really good things for the team. Yeah, that's an average of five and a half points. He's got 13 tonight. And then Pol Pol uh, Polovsky. Uh, you know, who scores for them. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Down to five. Where are you going? Block from behind, Stimpy. Goes out of bounds. Two seconds left on the shot clock. Inside a minute left in the game. Time out on the court, 58-42. Uh, Bob, I think it's safe to say the Mustangs uh, will go down to four and one on the year. Yeah, absolutely. Edgewood falling to two and three. I mean, I know they have a three-point shot in the game, but I don't know if they have a 16-point shot no. in the game at this point. Joppa Town, North Hartford, Boston, the three wins in a row for Seamilton right now. Ed Edgewood to that list of wins. Yeah. I think uh, Terry Munchko said it best that this team, it's his first year with the team. It maybe doesn't have the greatest athleticism of some of the teams that he had back in the early 2000s, but you can see they're playing hard, playing together. And with that JV team, Bob, that we saw a lot of hope for Edgewood in the future. Yeah, the other thing that I think I noticed with Edgewood is there's, there's not a lot of pure shooters on the team. And so it's, unless you get to the baskets, yeah. which is what the Maxwell kid has done to get his points, um, you know, the scoring has been been tough through those times. Out of bounds, it will stay here with Edgewood. But I think with the JV team that Edgewood has and with some of these kids like Maxwell coming back next year, um, you know, I think it, the, the team is in place to start the, the, to up the level of the program again and make it competitive. And so I, I'm really encouraged, you know, tonight. C. Milton, on the other hand, has had 10, 10 years of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of a program being competitive and being very, very good. And, and you can see it, see it that way. Mustangs winning regional titles back in 15, 16, 18, and 19. So four out of five years, they were the region 3A champion and the 2018 state champion. Yeah. Shot clock goes off. Come on, guys. We don't need fouls. You can let that go. 
Yeah. I thought maybe they were saying the shot clock had gone off, but no, they said it was a foul instead. So Bob says, it's time to go home. I've got a trip back to Anne Arundel County, right? Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, I thought I was going to go down to the beach tonight, but that'll be a tomorrow trip. Okay. Nice shot by Berger. Berger now with six points on the night. Make it seven. Wild shot, rebound block. That's Hitchcock who got that block just in the ball game. Shot clock is off. 18 seconds left in the game. Mustangs can salt it away. Redmond looks like he's uh, interested in doing just that. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm Edgewood, I'd just stand there and guard him, not five feet away. I wouldn't walk, yeah. And that is the end of the ball game. Our final score, the Seamilton Light Mustangs winning by a score of 60 to 42. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, like I said, it was a kind of basketball game I thought it would be. Um, you know, Edgewood has a, a ways to go at this particular point. Uh, C. Milton Wright has been there. You can, you can see the, uh, the number of years that they've had uh, as a program where, where they just run through things very, very well. Uh, technically, they, they work very hard. Um, you, you know, they're coached, well coached. And, and Edgewood's going to be that program in, 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 in you know, two, three years from now also. Mm -hmm. So, especially looking at that JV, undefeated JV program that they have. So yeah. our scores for the night, uh, it looks like Jordan Stimke, uh, not unexpected, 27 points, having a 48-point night against Boston last time out. Well, they held him below to his average. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his average is 26.25, so he's actually- oh, Above his average, above I, his I, average. Uh, I thought it was 28. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, eight points for Dylan Sander, 13 for Aaron Redmond, and uh, seven points for Eric Berger, that all for C. Milton Wright. Leading scorer and the only one in double figures for Edgewood, DeAndre Maxwell with 10 points. Again, our final score is 60-42. Bob, final thoughts, final comments? Like I said, I thought it was a, I thought it was a game I expected. C. Milton Wright is in a place where they should be. Edgewood is is in a program that's in development and growing, and um, you know I think both is going to happen over the course of the next couple of years. It'll be interesting to see see C. Milton Wright. They need to develop another shooter, um, you know, to take some pressure off. Raven gives them an inside player. Be nice to have one or two kids who can shoot the ball from outside for Simone, just just to take a little pressure off and spread the defense enough for for Stemke to do all the great things that he does. Our thoughts and prayers go with Elson Veronhu, who went down in that first half with a uh, yeah. elbow injury. We're certainly uh, hoping that the news is good for him and good for the team. I hope so. He he has um, he has really great parents. He comes from a good family. He's a good good young man. Uh, he's a pretty decent student, a quiet young man. Um, so I, I, you know, I'll, we'll be saying our prayers for him. So that is our final score. It is 60-42. We want to thank you all for tuning in to this uh, this telecast of the Harford TV High School Sports Showcase. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, C. Milton Wright again winning to go to four and one. Edgewood now at two and three. Bob McCone, always a pleasure to be with you. Always a pleasure to be with you, Don. Safe travels on your way back home. We'll see you all again after the holidays for more of the Hartford Showcase. Good night, everyone.